So that's the text block done. The next thing we're going to do is make the case and the case is designed to protect the text blocks. So to do that we're going to have um, grey board around the outside and we've determined the grain direction of the grey board and again the grain direction is running with the spine. The cover boards must allow a 5mm square at head, tail and fore edge and an inset of 5mm at the spine to allow space for the hinge. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare ourselves a little gauge that's going to go between the two boards. So when we come to glue the boards out, we know exactly how far away they need to be. So to do that, I'm going to get my text block on the boards exactly as we want them to sit. So with that even square all the way around and get the second board on top. And you're going to hold that nicely securely into place. And if you need to, you can take a bulldog clip to help keep that into place and you're going to take a scrap of cloth and pop it around the middle of the spine here and we're just going to put a little pencil mark on the edge of the board on that side and on the edge of the board on that side. Mylan cuts a strip of board the width of the gap. This will act as a gauge when gluing the boards in place. I'm just going to make a note that that is my gauge so I don't accidentally throw it in the bin. Okay. Bookbinding cloths come in a wide range of colours and finishes. Today, Mylan is using our standard range, which are cotton-based fabrics with a paper lining to prevent the penetration of glue to the outside. She has cut a piece of book cloth wide enough to cover the gap and overlap the boards by about 30 millimetres. The length of the cloth must also allow a 15 millimetre turn-in at head and tail. So now we can glue the cloth spine into place. So we can remove the boards and the spacer to one side and we're going to take a bit of waste paper, pop that underneath. And for this exercise we're going to use EVA which is a type of PVA. Um, you've also got um, starch paste available which has a slightly more longer drying time which can be used for, for other things but for what we're doing today the EVA works really well. Start in the middle and work our way out. Working from the centre outwards, Mylan uses vigorous decisive strokes with her glue brush to get an even coating across the surface of the cloth. She positions the spine gauge in the centre and lays the boards against the gauge, taking care to keep them level at head and tail. And then with your bone folder you're going to bring up the excess and turn that in nicely over onto the board into that groove area there. Same on the other side. There. And then we can turn that round and give it a nice rub from the outside. Next we're going to put our decorative paper on and we need the same sort of turn in around the outside. So I have prepared a couple of pieces of decorative paper and you want there to be the turn in top and bottom and on the open edge, the fore edge as well. So again we're going to get some clean waste paper, we're going to glue out our decorative paper and again starting from the middle and you'll see I'm using the, the brush in my fist rather than holding it like a, a sort of paintbrush and that just helps you to get a nice even spread. Bring the paper onto the cloth by about two millimetres and I want to make sure there's an equal overhang top and bottom and I'm just gently positioning it so that it's nice and even and when I'm happy I'm going to just give that a nice rub down a rub down all the way and then with our book binding scissors we can cut our corners and we want to cut those off at 45 degree angle and leaving about a board thickness or so just between where the scissors go and the edge of the board and then 
with the bone folder we're going to bring the paper up over the edge of the board and then when it comes to the corners you're just going to tweak the edge of the corner around the board just so that it tapers in slightly so you're using the tip of the bone folder for that so that you get a nice tapered corner which we call a book binding corner and that just comes around the outside of the board like that and then the last edge gets turned in and I'm using my fingers and the folder to get it nice and tight around the edge and then you've got these lovely neat corners and then we're going to do the same on the other side. The process of casing in attaches the case to the book block and completes the binding. Mylan lays the dried out case flat on the table with the outside facing down. She positions the book block on one of the cover boards, ensuring that the squares are correct. She then slips in a sheet of waste paper to protect the book block. Mylan works briskly to get an even coating of glue on the end paper. First, she applies the adhesive underneath the mull before working in an outwards direction. Working towards the edges, she quickly covers the whole end paper. Care must be taken not to get glue on the edges of the paper of the book block. Note how she adds a little glue to the surface of the case. That will just give the glue a little movement if she needs to adjust the position of the end paper. Over and just gently positioning it and then before I apply any pressure I'm just going to lift that up, see where the end paper is sitting, making sure I'm happy that it's sitting nice and in line and I am so I'm going to then just go ahead and rub that down and I'm being careful in this joint area not to rub too hard because that's wet with adhesive. Instead what I'm going to do is close the book over, turn that round and rub in that joint area from the outside. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So turning the book round, opening the text block, nice clean bit of waste paper in between the coloured leaves, adhesive on the brush, starting underneath the mole and then on top of the mole and then we're going to go ahead and glue the rest of the end paper. making sure you've got a nice thin layer and that you're covering everywhere, you haven't got any dry spots. A little bit on the board in case I need to just move it slightly. Waste paper comes out, holding the text block in place, gently close the cover and before we apply any pressure we're just going to open it up, see where it's sitting, move it if we need to and then rub it down when we're happy. Mylan is careful not to pull the board back too far as this can stretch the end paper and cause it to crease when the book is closed again. And there we have a finished book. Okay, so now that it's bound, we can see that actually it's starting to bow a little bit and that's because there's wet adhesive on the materials and that needs to dry and settle. It's a good idea to now cut some silicon release paper or grease proof serial packet paper also can work well, to insert between the inside boards and the free end paper. This will stop any surplus glue from sticking where it should not and also help to prevent moisture from the boards penetrating the book block as it dries. Most importantly, the book must be left to dry out properly between wooden boards and under a flat weight. You will now have completed your first bookbinding project and if you have used the art of the book you will also have a useful textbook to remind you of what you have learned. If you don't yet have a copy you can also download each page from our website. You can make a wide variety of books using blank paper to make notebooks, journals, scrapbooks and sketchbooks using the same techniques. You can also begin to explore the wide variety of colourful and decorative materials that make handbook binding such a rewarding and exciting craft.
The art of the book is just the beginning. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. Our next video explores multi-section binding and is the following chapter of the art of the book. For more information, visit our website and I look forward to seeing you then.